Hi there, Jay Tedeschi here, Senior Technical Marketing Specialist with Autodesk. Today we're going to take a look at part modeling with Inventor Pro 2016. Specifically, we're going to work on developing out a selector rack assembly. Let me grab that right now and uh, section it. There you go, so you can see into it. And we're going to develop the lever arm that rides on the shift selector barrel, which is that gray cylindrical piece you see right there. So I've activated a design view, which takes us in to the view itself. Let's select a sketch plane. And we'll start by projecting some existing geometry onto the sketch plane itself. Now these will be the limits, uh, some of the hard points that are required to be part of this um, selector tooth. So we'll start by sketching some lines here, making sure to reference existing geometry where we can, where it makes sense. Let's switch over to an arc, make sure that's Go. We've got tangency on that. And we can add tangency for the end of that arc to the circle. So that's now fully defined. We'll add tangency here. The geometric constraints allow us to specifically tie down a sketch without the need for using dimensions. Uh, here we're using some dimensions just to essentially describe overall the size of the selector tooth itself that rides within the rack assembly. These are all parametric dimensions. These can be uh, linked and driven as a function of one another. They could also be controlled in any one of a number of ways. Uh, let's continue on. We'll locate this arc, the radius of the arc. Let's grab this distance here. This is actually going to ultimately be a nice little cutout. So these all have to be dimensioned. Let's get this angle. That's going to be 10 degrees. This angle right here. That's going to be 24. That's looking pretty good. So let's use the trim functionality. So the sketcher, basically, it's, you know, there's nothing new in the sketcher. Uh, all the tools are there to allow you to quickly and easily create uh, the sketch of the part that you're trying to create. In this case we're going to do a symmetric extrusion, 5 millimeters. Let's go ahead and add some fillets now. Some, Grab the entire part and then select the fillet radius for that. And Now we'll use the select loop to deselect the outer loops themselves. So this is a very quick way to allow us to essentially add fillet radiuses to all of the extruded edges. Now let's select the whole functionality. We'll select the di diameter that we want. We'll specify that we want it to be concentric. We'll pick the face, pick the concentric edge. And right now, as you can see, 8 millimeters is a little large. We'll address that again in a second. So we've created a new sketch and we've projected some of the geometry, some of the associated geometry from the selector rack barrel onto our sketch plane. So now we have that sketch line sitting there and we'll create a two point rectangle based on that. And the, the reason that that is there was essentially so that we can dimension from that reference edge to this cutout edge. And as you can see, um, I'm able to very quickly and easily drag and and relocate uh, components of the of the reference geometry or the rectangle that we created and from there I've added a geometric constraint specifying that we want the top of the rectangle to be collinear with that reference geometry. We'll now extrude that rectangle over as a feature cut and that is now going to give us the tooth on the selector uh, the selector tooth it's, uh, itself. Now, let's utilize direct editing to make a couple of quick changes. This uh, specifically with regard to uh, where the, the extents of the tooth uh, essentially reside. Uh, direct editing uh, is a very, very quick and valid way of making modifications without going back in and changing the constraint scheme that you, always, that you already have. 
So in this case, it was very advantageous for me to utilize that methodology. Now, as you can see, I'm trying to manipulate the top edge of the rectangle that we created. But as you recall, we added a collinear constraint, which is holding it essentially uh, in line with that reference edge. But by turning on relax mode sketching, as you can see, I'm able to temporarily disable that and then pull the top of the rectangle down. Uh, this, this functionality is very is extremely valuable when you're working on parts that have sketches or uh, schemes, sketch schemes that you did not define yourself and therefore uh, you know if, if it's going to take you an inordinate amount of time to figure out the the scheme itself it's advantageous to use direct mode editing to just go in and then change that. Now with adaptivity as you saw I just made that hole there adaptive. Now what adaptivity allows us to do is to base the size of for in this case the hole here is going to be based on the size of the pin that it fits around. So all I have to do is basically say that I want the diameter of this hole to be the di outside diameter of that pin plus 50 thousandths of a millimeter, so 0 0.05 millimeters. So that gives me my clearance. Now the beauty of this technique of modeling is that if the pin diameter ever changes, the hole in the, that tooth will update as well. That's a quick look at part modeling within Inventor Professional 2016. I want to thank you for your time, and I hope to talk to you all again soon. Bye-bye.